So I always speak about love. And people are familiar with that concept. And we've spoken about it in Tanya too. But reverence, fear, and awe are something that we don't speak that much about because, well, people feel all you need is love. But sometimes we need reverence, a respect that can lead to a sense of fear and ultimately to awe. Let's explain them in reference what it means to study Torah. So respect and reverence are probably more in the actions of the individual. Respect means you make a space for another, you, you uh, deference to another, for example. So when it comes to Torah study, we can, um, you know, make space for it. You know, we make space for it in our the time of our in our schedule. We make uh, space for it that you know I'm open to its message, which is great. From there, we can come to something more than it's not just um, a behavioral thing, but we have a fear. A fear here, not fear of punishment, not fear of um, of um, being, you know, not good enough or, or some negative form of fear. No, fear meaning the fear of disconnect. That you recognize how remarkable Torah study is in the uni and union with God through Torah study, the perfect unity that there is through Torah study. And you don't want to be disconnected from it. You don't want to be disconnected from that bond, that perfect unity. That's a feeling. That's more of a feeling. That's something more developed than like a, um, a respect. Respect isn't as much of a feeling as it is a action that we show respect. Fear, fear of disconnect. That we don't want to be disconnected. Now, of course, the reason you don't want to be disconnected is because you appreciate what the connection is, which would be the flip side, love. So, by appreciating and understanding the profound connection we have right now, even though we don't experience it, we get a feeling we don't want to be disconnected from this truth and this reality. And then comes, even greater than that, is awe. Awe is like you're blown away by it. In other words, it's not only you just don't want to be disconnected, but it, it's so real, you're blown away by it. Like the uh, Jewish people standing at the, uh, at the foot of Mount Sinai. God's words, his, the two of the Ten Commandments that he spoke, their soul took flight. Why? Because it was so awesome. They were, you know, blown away. They had to be kind of revived because it was so unreal. So awesome, <laughs> as the saying goes, right? So that's even more profound. And as the author of says, it, that's already a level that, you know, well, I know not everybody's going to be able to accomplish. But to have a respect for Torah that we make space for it, we give time of our day because we know it's, you know, we're, we're connecting with God in a perfect unity. Not only we give time of the day, but we give space in our mind that, you know, this is God's truth and I want to 
make space for it in my mind. I want to entertain it. I want to think it. I want to make it a part of me. That's out of a, a, you know, that's a respect that we show for it. And then again, beyond that is that we really, truly, we, we sense on some level that it's, 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 it's something so special, that union, that bond with God, that I, um, you know, it, 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 I, I feel the connection, and I don't want to be disconnected from that. That's something that we should ponder upon. You know, before we learn Tanya, during the day at some points, or before we learn other things, because then it puts us in, the, in a healthy state of mind, frame of reference, good context of it, and uh, then the engagement will be, you know, more meaningful and truly connective one. All right, questions, comments, thoughts about this. Reminder, two question marks before. Two question marks before you ask a question. That way I know what I'm looking now I'm looking for a question. Um, Davida, are there any specific parts of Torah that we should study more to achieve this? Well, I guess what we're learning right now, this chapter, definitely. Anything more? I'm, I don't know. I have to, I'm not certain. I have to think about that. Uh, will we automatically feel the uh, uh, the awe of Hashem when Mashiach comes? Or are we still... Well, you know, what we're doing now, in our learning, we're, even if we don't feel that awe, we're unlikely we do, but because we're learning it, and we're in trying to incorporate it through the respect and then the, the sense of fear or the, the desire not to be disconnected, That will allow us, when Mashiach comes, that it will be so real for us. It'll be awesome. <laughs> then it'll be awesome. Yep, so absolutely. So we've got to learn it now because we've got to learn it now for its own sake, but also at the same time, it will allow us, it'll be the stepping stone. It'll be, it give us the capacity that we will be able to have the experience and that experience will be awesome. Alice, is there a hierarchy of mitzvahs versus Torah study? Are those who study the Torah all day in a higher place than people who express through the mitzvahs primary to give a portion of their day to Torah study? So, um, you know, none of us are on the level, and there's very few people that exist in a generation that, you know, they devote their whole day to Torah study. Um, and that's, you know, they're terrasim of nasim there. They're, they're, their livelihood, so to speak, not that they're making money from it, but is, you know, Torah study, no. So we're all in the same boat. We all, we learn, we do other things, you know, we have our own lives, uh, you know, that we've got to attend to. We've got family, we've got work, we've got, you know, uh, the path that we take. Now, of course, in that path, we need to bring Hashem into it, no doubt. Um, but we are people who just put aside some time to study. As a, so in that time that we study versus, tor, um, versus mitzvahs, which is greater, the union that we achieve through our Torah study is greater than the union we do through mitzvahs, as we've explained in this chapter. But we will learn later that there's something unique that's achieved through mitzvahs that Torah study doesn't have. And hence, we need both. But we're going to get into that more later. Gold up. What about the fear of losing God's protection? So that's not Tanya. There is that. That's like the child who's going through a crowded mall with their, 
their mother or father holding their hand and there's a fear that if they let go of their hand that they may get lost in the mall and they are fearful of that that's a child's fear and it's legitimate that's legitimate but recognize that it's for a child when we grow up um as we grow up it should not be about the fear of losing God's protection. It should be about losing the connection. Because protection is sort of like, I, God, I'm doing this so I could get something from you. I need your protection. So, yeah, I'm doing this mitzvah. I'm studying this Torah, whatever it is, so I can get something from you. That's a child. A mature adult is. I'm doing this because I value you and I want the connection with you. That's adult. I hope that explains. Laurie, it's very difficult to truly find awe, especially when it's a struggle to step, stop worrying about your own day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Can't argue that, Laurie. <laughs> it's difficult. I guess we got to stop worrying about our day-to-day -day life. I mean, it's easy to say, but you know, the more Hashem is, in our, is, is real in our lives, the more we stop worrying because worrying doesn't accomplish anything. Well, it does. It just brings us down, makes us despondent. I mean, that doesn't accomplish anything positive. So, um, the more Torah mitzvahs is in our lives, the more Hashem is in our lives, the more uh, we will stop worrying and therefore the more we'll be able to have a, re a reverence, a, f a fear of disconnect and an awe. Uh, John, when the Jewish people heard the voice of God, their souls took flight, was this uh shave half of relative shave yes absolutely absolutely uh what happens uh david is asking to the jews who don't study torah when mashiach comes uh, you know they'll uh, they'll be on a less spirit they'll be on a lesser spiritual level but they'll be yet at the same time they'll be exalted Everybody, just today is like, you know, everybody's on kind of a different level. So then Mashiach's time also will just be much, you know, it'll be uh, much enhanced. Laurie, will the reading of Tillam Psalms help with the feeling of awe? It can, not necessarily, because you could read it without awe, right? But it definitely could, you know, um, it definitely could. I mean, it, it, the sense of reverence, fear of disconnect, and awe uh, are something we need mindfulness, which <laughs> I'm not always mindful because I, sometimes I forget, but now because I said that, I reminded myself. If we want to enhance anything that we've spoken about here, please join me in the JLI upcoming course, Meditation from Sinai. Those meditations will be about how to have mind dominion over the heart, how, you know, we're not a product of our mind. We can be in control of our mind. How to increase joy, less anxiety in our lives, how to um, eat better, sleep deeper and work higher that's the forthcoming course of jli that's going to be phenomenal if you haven't signed up yet there is a cost it's a hundred dollars canadian about eighty dollars us it includes a book that costs you know with shipping and and handling uh, i think it costs us thirty dollars us if i'm not mistaken something around there um, and whatever everything of course costs 
I know most people don't like to spend money, especially when you can get free Torah. <laughs> but this um, needs to be spent and uh, whatever. Um, uh, strongly suggest that those who haven't signed up yet do uh, do sign up. It's going to be um, awesome. <laughs> awesome is the least I can say about it. Um, and to get it, you need to go to ChabadZichrein.com and ChabadZichrein.com you can uh, can sign up. Now, uh, some of you might go to your local Chabad and by all means, take it with your local Chabad. You don't have to take it with me. Um, yeah, but if you choose to, by all means. Davida, if you don't mind, can you put up and uh, leave up, put up the ChabadZichrein.com website on Instagram and on Facebook so people can have the link. Um, and... Uh, Anyways, do consider. Luz, please share with us. Hey, Rabbi. No, I just wanted to tell you that I love your YouTube videos. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. And since I watch them and I hear you here, I can, I can visualize you every time you talk and you have like a little laugh, little, you know, something... It's wonderful. I love your YouTube videos. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, beautiful. All right. Anybody else to share with us? I missed something here. Is there any questions on Instagram that I missed? Mind of Rambam, one o'clock today. Sack, should we re expect something in return for Dominic three times a day? Yeah, connection. Imagine someone, you know. We can pray three times a day. God is giving us an invitation that we can have a connection with him, with our hearts, through prayer. Um, what greater value is there? What greater return can there be than the connection itself? And this is a, a difficulty that I think most of us have, because we're looking for a return in the connection. We're looking for the return in that connection in our human uh, relationships rather than appreciating the connection itself. Oh yeah, Facebook doesn't allow to put up a website. Yeah, it doesn't want anything competing with it. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to put up Chabad Zichrein. And uh, you have to put the dot com yourself. Okay, so it's not a real connection. Because <laughs> I didn't put dot com. <laughs> so you have to make the connection yourself. Important lesson in life. Um, yeah, so we're always looking for a return. What do I have from this? Rather than what is this? It's a connection. What do I have from this connection? to my sibling? What do I have my, with this connection to uh, my spouse? What do I have from this connection to my friend? What do I have? That's, yeah, that's pretty human. But that's not at all what we're talking about. I have a connection with God through my Torah study of our unity, a oneness. Wow. Amazing. I can get it through prayer right? and with my heart. I can get it with a mitzvah to be bound up. So there's desire for that alone. Um, 
that's that's rising above again the human condition and being godly. I repeat it over and over because we're so mired, we're so sunk into the you know into this world that it's hard. It's a hard thing. We're all addicts, you know that. We're all addicts about ourselves. We're addicted to ourselves. How I feel about this, how I think about this, what I want from this. Reverence and fear and awe ultimately is beyond myself. There's space for something greater than me that I connect to. And that I, you know, that we're, we're connected to. And that allows us to get over the, the ultimate of the addiction about me, and all about me. Not, a, not in a bad way about me. About me to be kind, about me to, to be loving, you know. Anyway, we're going to get a lot more about this. Okay. All right, folks. More to come. But right now, I bid farewell. And Thank, you, Rabbi. Thank you. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, Tamdiva Chabad Zerchan Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time. Have a wonderful day.